Hey guys, Dave here, ready to talk to you about the relevant range in this presentation. I'm going to try and go through this tutorial quickly without knocking anything over as I've got a bunch of notes and textbooks and this huge whiteboard that looks like it's about to topple over at any given moment. So if you hear a crashing sound midway through the tutorial, just know that it's probably my computer desk imploding on itself. Last time we were talking about fixed costs and variable costs, which are incredibly important when talking about the relevant range, since the relevant range is this concept that suggests that within a certain range of cost driver activity, that total fixed costs and per unit variable costs will remain the same. So when we went over variable costs and fixed costs in the last tutorial, I created this kind of square box, divided it into four different quadrants, put variable costs and fixed costs along the top and per unit and total costs along the side. And we noticed that the fixed costs or the total fixed cost remained the same within a certain range of cost driver activity and that the variable costs per unit remained the same within a certain range of cost driver activity as well what changed were the fixed costs per unit and the total costs of variable costs. So the, the, these same figures, the variable cost per unit and the fixed costs or the total fixed costs will remain the same as long as we're in the relevant range or a certain range of cost driver activity. It's only going to change when we're outside of the relevant range and I guess I can give you an example. In last time we were talking about, I think, fudge bars, and I owned a store, fudge bars at a store, and the rent was $50,000. So uh, let's just say that, that this fixed cost is yearly, and we'll put cost driver activity along the x-axis and costs on the y-axis. And let's say we have a certain amount of unit activity of 20,000 bars being sold and 80,000. So within this, this range of cost driver activity, our, our cost of, or our total fixed costs are 50,000. I'm just putting 50K, which represents 50,000. If you were wondering what the K, it's just 1,000 and that was our relevant range. It would only change if our cost driver activity goes outside of this, this, this range of 20 to 80,000 units. So if we sold less than 20,000 units, we would probably not be able to break even and we would have to close up shop. So we would have zero dollars of fixed costs since we would not have a store. If we were selling above 80,000 units, then we would probably need to expand and create a second store so we would have $100,000 of, of fixed cost because we have two stores now. So our, our fixed cost would change. So as you can see, the relevant range, the, the fixed cost is gonna remain the, the same within the relevant range, but outside of it, it can change. So just know that outside of the relevant range that that total fixed costs can actually change and the same will go for variable costs per unit. So I'm going to draw out the exact same thing and let's say that each fudge bar is a dollar. So we're purchasing this from a supplier. So I'll put costs again on the y-axis and um, activity along the x-axis. I'll put 20,000 and 80,000 again. So if we sell between 20 and 80,000 bars, the, the, um, the cost of or our variable cost of purchasing fudge bars from our supplier is going to be a dollar. So I'm going to quickly draw a line right there to show that it's the same within that relevant range. But if we were to sell less than 20,000, then we would probably not receive bulk discounts and we might have a higher variable cost per bar and then we would have to raise prices. So 
outside of the relevant range, it changes. And if we sold more than 80,000, we'd probably get a discount. Let's say it would bring our variable cost down to 50 cents a bar. So it would we would get that bulk discount and the variable cost per unit would change. So once again, within the relevant range, our variable cost per unit will stay the same and it will change outside of the relevant range. And it's, it's good to know this concept because when we actually look at cost drivers to actually, or not cost drivers, but um, cost functions to project costs, these cost functions will be created using a certain relevant range and we won't be able to project costs outside of the relevant range because we'll have only created this cost function using the data within the relevant range. But you won't have to worry yet about the cost function as I will be covering that and I'll explain that much more clearly when we get to that in one or two tutorials. So I'll see you guys in the next one and make sure to subscribe and thanks for watching. If you have any questions regarding accounting or any other material within our videos, you can tweet us at NotePirate, you can like us on Facebook to receive updates, or to share any quick anecdotes about how our videos might have helped. And like always, thanks for watching us on YouTube.